Okay. Um, no. Okay. So, um, hello. My name is uh, Patricia Gavot, and I'm gonna present my work from Introduction to Research, which is sign language translation based on transformers for the How to Sign dataset. Um, here we have the index. First, I will begin uh, my presentation with a small introduction to the topic. Then I will move towards the sign language transformers work. Um, later, I will explain the reproducibility of this uh, well, this work and the adaptation to how to sign. Uh, following, I will explain the experiment results and I will finish uh, with the conclusions and the future work lines. And now I will start with the introduction. Um, sign language is the basic communication channel for deaf people. It consists of uh, manual articulations and non-manual elements such as body poses or mouth movements. Um, besides, uh, sign language has its own uh, linguistic singularities uh, that can be different grammar and semantics. Um, also, the glosses or gloss annotations are direct transcriptions of a uh, sign language with uh, textual information about the signs. Um, the communication for these uh, communities with the rest of the society is difficult. So uh, therefore, a solution for this problem could be using automatic, automatic machine translation for a uh, sign language. Uh, and now I'm going to introduce the two main tasks. Um, on the one hand, we have the sign language translation, and its goal is to generate the written sentences from the sign videos. And on the other hand, we have the recognition, and its main goal is to generate the sequences of glosses from the sign videos too. And um, besides, uh, this recognition task may be also seen as an intermediate step towards the machine translation. Um, so now I'm going to present the work introduced by Kamgoth et al, Sun Language Transformers, Joint End-to-End -end, um, Recognition and Translation, and uh, it was released on 2020. Uh, besides, this work has been the basis of my uh, research work. Um, this work, uh, they introduced a novel architecture based on the transformers, and their approach uh, consisted in learning in a jointly manner, manner their recognition and their translation tasks. Um, they trained their model on the Phoenix dataset that I will further talk about more, more of this uh, later. And uh, this way, they provided a state of the -art results for both uh, tasks, the recognition and the translation, that outperformed all the previous works uh, in this uh, topic. Um, now I'm going to explain the main architecture of the work. Uh, first, in the left part of the architecture, we have the encoder model, which they call the sign language recognition transformer. Uh, the main goal of this part is to recognize the glosses given the same videos. However, there's a second important goal for this model, which is to learn uh, meaningful spatial temporal representations of the sign videos in order to use them in the further translation task. And um, this model receives as input uh, sign features extracted from the spatial embedding layer that receives the raw video frames. And it follows the classic architecture of an encoder. Uh, which is a self-attention model and a feedforward model. And second, in the right part of the um, architecture, we have the decoder model, which they named the sign language translation transformer. Um, its goal is to generate the spoken sentences from the sign video representations. And uh, as input, it receives a one-hot encoding vector generated in the word embedding layer. Um, it follows the classical autoregressive decoder architecture. And um, first, it has the mass self-attention model. And then it is followed by an encoder decoder attention model. Um, uh, also, this part is very important because it learns the mapping between the spoken transcriptions and the spatiotemporal uh, representations that were learned in the encoder part. And then it is also followed by a fit-forward model. 
Um, following, I will explain the reproducibility of uh, the model with the original setup. Um, first, I will present the data set that they used. Uh, it's the Phoenix. Uh, this data set uh, consists in a parallel corpus of signed videos, uh, the gloss annotations, and the spoken sentences. Um, this data set belongs to a specific domain, which is the weather forecast, because all the videos were gathered from the uh, German public TV. Um, Besides uh, this data set that was published uh, by the authors along with the code uh, does not contain the raw video frames, but uh, contains the sign features that were already extracted. So um, in their work, uh, the authors mentioned that they extracted these features from a pre-chain net network that followed a CNN, LSTM, HMM architecture, and it was uh, trained on a recognition task in the same Phoenix dataset. Uh, so in this uh, table below, uh, we can see that our reproduced results on Phoenix are very similar to the ones provided by the authors in their work, especially the Bleu scores. And they took around one hour of uh, training. Um, now I will describe the adaptation process to our setup uh, with how to sign. Um, how to sign is a multimodal and multi-view American sign language uh, dataset. It contains more than 80 hours of parallel corpora of uh, sign videos uh, that correspond to tutorials, um, speech, the English transcriptions, and also the depth. Uh, besides, it provides uh, three hours of 3D pose estimation. Um, however, there is a problem that in this dataset, uh, the glosses are not available. We don't have them um, in hand. So uh, our approach was to replace uh, these glosses by the English transcriptions. So this way we could still learn some meaningful uh, representations of the sign videos in the encoder part in order to improve the translation. So um, now I'm going to make a comparison between these two data sets. Uh, first, as I just mentioned, the, the glosses are not available for how to sign while the Phoenix uh, dataset contain them. Uh, second, the volume of data is much uh, bigger in how to sign than in Phoenix, because as it can be seen, uh, the number of entries in how to sign is four times larger than in Phoenix. And uh, third, uh, the data from data from how to sign belongs to different domains because they are tutorials, while the videos uh, gathered for uh, Phoenix uh, belong to only one domain, which is the weather forecast. So, uh, for instance, uh, the number of words, uh, unique words, I mean, in how to sign is uh, almost 10 times larger than in Phoenix. So. Therefore, for these uh, different reasons, we expect that uh, these differences will affect the model's performance. Uh, following, uh, we faced another problem, uh, which was that the original alignment from how to uh, of the corpus uh, was based on the original speech. So there was a problem because there was a delay between the signed videos and the speech. So we had to generate a new uh, alignment based on the sentences. And this way, uh, we had the video frames corresponding to each of the text sentences. And we used this new alignment for our translation task. Um, besides, uh, this work uh, here below in the slide provides a quantitative comparison between the, these two alignments. And they showed big improvements when using uh, the new text alignment. Um, as I just mentioned uh, before, the authors used um, uh, features extracted from a pretend network on Phoenix with a recogn recognition task. Um, but there was a problem that neither the, the code uh, was published and the architecture was either specified, uh, so we couldn't uh, use it. So we had to propose another approach. Um, and we decided to extract this, uh, this, our features from an I3D neural network trained on our dataset, that is uh, how to sign, for our recognition task. Um, this network belongs to the work specified here below in the slide. 
And besides, uh, I would like to highlight an important difference between these two embeddings, uh, well, the, the embeddings we used and the ones used in the original paper. Um, this uh, new, well, our embeddings take into account the um, temporal dimension because they were built using um, three dimensional convolutional, convolutional layers of video clips with uh, six, 16 uh, frames while the original embeddings, uh, the architecture used uh, two dimensional uh, convolutional layers, which means that they uh, took the information at frame level. Okay. Um, and following, I will explain uh, the implementation and the experiment results. Uh, first, um, we used the code provided in the work uh, Sang Language Transformers that was released in 2020. Uh, most of the configuration was maintained uh, from the original um, code. And uh, for the evaluation details, the authors use the, the following. Uh, for recognition, they use the word error rate or where. And for translation, uh, they use the Bleu scores with n grams from one to four. However, uh, as we already mentioned, uh, we didn't have the glosses for the how to sign data set. So the recognition task was not um, properly addressed. So this way we didn't use the where metric to assess the performance of our models. So uh, even though we kept almost all the original configuration, we also made some adjustments. So uh, first we modified the batch size because the amount of GPU uh, memory required was too much and we re reduced the value from 13 to 16. Um, second, we also modified the validation frequency because the validation step during the training uh, took too much uh, time. It was around one hour each, each step. So we um, increased uh, the value from 100 to 1000. And third, uh, we also modified the beam search uh, decoding step. Uh, this is a, a different time. Uh, there is an iterative process that finds the optimal beam search width for each of the tasks, the recognition and the translation. The problem is that it takes a lot of time to evaluate each of the, the values. Some of them are around six or seven hours. So our solution was uh, for the recognition. Um, we decided to select only one value, uh, which was the 10, uh, 10 because uh, the higher the value, the better the results. And for the translation uh, it search, we decided to maintain this iterative process to find the optimal width value. Um, finally, uh, when we managed to have a trainable model, we started the process to optimize them. Um, we choose to find the optimal values of two hyperparameters, the number of layers and the number of heads. Uh, and its baselines were three heads and eight uh, layers. Um, and first of all, uh, first I want to mention that all the results obtained on how to sign were after 24 hours of training and not after they convert. And this is because our servers have a time limit for the executions. Um, so first we analyze the effect of uh, modifying the number of transformer layers. In this uh, table below, uh, it can be seen that the best performance is obtained with uh, two layers. Um, however, in this image, the experiment with uh, these two layers, that is the blue line, it starts increasing um, the translation loss after uh, the Epoch 5. So we also observe that the baseline model, the one with uh, three layers, obtain good results too in the table. And um, the translation loss for this experiment, which is the purple one, decreased during all the training. So, um, well, and also besides uh, in this image, uh, it can be seen that the blue line and the purple line, the two models that I mentioned before, uh, had reached the best uh, blue for scores during the training. So we decided to build the following experiments with uh, two and three layers, but separately. Um, then uh, we studied the impact of modifying the number of heads. Uh, first, we began the model with uh, three layers. 
um, the best performance, it can be seen in the table, that is achieved with uh, four heads that differs from the baseline. And then we build experiments with uh, two layers. And in this second table, we can observe that the best performance is uh, with the model with eight heads that corresponds to the baseline value. So uh, following, we compared the results between the two best selected models, the, three, the one with three layers and four heads, and the one with two layers and eight heads. Um, we decided to be the best uh, model, the one with three layers and four heads, and here I explain the reasons. First of all, uh, it showed best uh, performance in the tables from the previous slide. It could be seen that um, the model, uh, this one, obtained uh, around 0 0.3 um, higher values in the Bleu for a score for both the validation and the test set. Um, also, uh, the evolution during the training for the of the Bleus for a score for this model, the pink one, uh, is more prominent than uh, the other model, which is the one in blue. And also, uh, the translation loss um, the, the, that is this new image for this model, the pink one, is uh, nearly all the time decreasing, while for the other model, it starts increasing after the Epoch 5. So for these reasons, we decided this model to be the optimal one. Uh, finally, we compared our best model with um, how to sign with our reproduced results on Phoenix. It can be seen in the table that the performance of our best model has uh, poor results compared to the ones obtained on Phoenix. But um, first of all, it is imp important to mention that it's not truly fair to compare them because they represent two different experiments because the data sets are different. So uh, even so, I want to make some consider considerations on this um, outcome. Uh, first, the solution space in uh, Phoenix is much smaller, which means that it's much easier for a model to guess the solution in Phoenix than in how to sign. Because uh, remember that the number of unique words in uh, how to sign was 10 times larger than in Phoenix. Uh, second, the models trained on how to sign didn't converge because they stopped after uh, 24 hours of training. And uh, third, the glosses were not um, available in how to sign. And this represents a, a real problem because uh, the task of the glosses was to guide the learning of uh, meaningful spatiotemporal representations in the encoder part to help the translation task improve the results. And because as we replace the glosses with the English sentences, uh, this task was not truly addressed. And additionally, uh, in this uh, work below in the slide, uh, they modeled uh, the sign language translation task uh, the same as we did. Uh, they used the same architecture and uh, the similar sign video embeddings as the one we used, the ones we used, because we extracted our uh, features from this uh, same work. Um, the results uh, they provided in their work um, with the, in the Bleu 4 score and the Bleu 1 are very similar to the results we obtained with the baseline. So uh, this uh, similar performance gives uh, solidity to our results. And uh, to sum up, I'm going to present the conclusions and the future work. Um, first, uh, in this work, we introduced a uh, new sentence-based uh, alignment. It ha has been evidenced in other works that it improves the performance of models that work with uh, sign videos and the sentences or text. And we have used this uh, new alignment on our translation task. Uh, also, we provide first results on the translation task with uh, the how to sign data set. And the best, most important thing is that these results can work as baselines for future investigations on the topic. Um, it is important to mention that I will uh, continue uh, this research work in my uh, Vacular thesis, thesis. And I want to mention too that uh, 
during all these months, I have worked in a research team and especially I have collaborated with a master's student, Madame, because she's working in San language translation too, uh, the same as me, but in another approach. And I personally uh, consider that this cooperation among the team members has been very constructive. Um, and finally, uh, during the realization of this work, I have faced, uh, well, we have faced several limitations. Uh, face, first, um, we have uh, a limitation of 24 hours for an execution um, for our, in our servers. So as we explained, none of the models uh, trained on how to sign converts. And a future work will consist on retraining these models from the checkpoints until they converge. And this way, uh, they should improve their performance uh, significantly. Um, second, uh, the clauses were not available for how to sign. So the recognition task was not addressed. So as future work, we should find a way to obtain or generate uh, these glosses. And uh, finally, another approach uh, could be, another future work could be to modify uh, other parameters, other parts of the model to improve uh, the performance of the models. Uh, thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Thank you very much for the presentation. Let me stop recording.